Anyway, I want to talk to you guys tonight about, about fun because it may be an interesting subject, especially with all of us dealing with what we're dealing with right now um, and there not being much fun around or what seems to be fun. You know, um, we've made a whole lot of um, we've made a whole lot of lemonades out of le- or yeah, we've made a whole lot of lemonade out of the lemons that we've been given. Um, thank God for His grace. Thank God for His mercy. Um, but you know what? It's time for us to have fun. It's time for us to be the body of Christ, and it's time for us to live and have fun. How many of you guys know people that don't want to be Christians because they don't think it's fun? I mean. I didn't think Christianity was fun when I was, you know, doing what I was doing, but I just thought it was something that you had to do rules and regulations. Brayden, it's good to see you, bud. Uh, you just had to do rules and regulations and that type of thing. It was just a disaster. I didn't think Christianity was fun, but I want you to know that Christianity can be fun because, you know, first and foremost, Christianity can be fun because life without faith is so much fun. And if you look at fun, the F equals the faith, right? So it's impossible to please God without faith. But you know, faith without works is dead. But yet also there are so many things that we can have in life and we can do in life because we have faith. So faith is so like the starting point of our Christianity. Faith is the starting point of us having fun as a Christian, so in Mark eleven twenty two and 23, it says, if you speak to the mountain, it'll be removed, right? And it'll be cast into the sea. So I want you to know that if you guys have faith, whatever mountain is standing in your way, it can be cast into the sea. Whatever dreams and desires God has put inside your heart, you can fulfill them because with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. And so I want you to know that not only... Is, is faith the most important thing? Faith unites, okay? Faith unites us with Christ. Faith unites us with our destiny. Our faith and our desires unite us with our destiny and our desires and our dreams. So I want you guys to know that you must have faith. You must accept Jesus because when you accept Jesus, you become united with him. So faith unites us. And then why would we need faith and why would we need to be united? We have faith and we need to be united so that we can reach the nations. Tonight is just going to be a night of real talk and us having fun, right? Us having fun in God is we're going to have faith. And it's going to be faith that unites us to go to the nations. And so the nations is nothing more than people. You know, we are called to have faith and, uh, and to reach our world. You know, the last thing Jesus told us was to go and make disciples of all nations and go and win the lost by laying hands on the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the leper. You know, we must have fun with our Christianity because our Christianity and our relationship with God is just not a religion. It's something that is active. God is real. God is alive and he wants to have fun. God wants to show himself faithful to so many people, but we must be the ones that show him to others. We must be the ones that go out and and fulfill the Great Commission. We are going to be the conduit. We're going to be the water hose, right? Like I think I talked about last week, we must not have faith in the water hose, but we must have faith in the water that's coming through the hose, Right? It's not the water hose. It's not us that does anything, but it's not us that produces the power. It's not us that heals the sick. It's not us that gives the life, but it's us that gets to utilize and channel what God is, what God is in, in, endeavoring to do for so many. So we must have fun in life, okay? We must have faith that unites us to the nations. We must have faith that unites us to go to the nations of the world, Remember, life is to be lived fun. You know, your life should be something that is lived so that you can have fun. You should have faith that unites you to go to the nations. What does the nations mean? The nations seriously just means people. So if that is your school, your faith should, should, should unite you to go talk to your friends about Jesus. Your faith should unite you to go and to lay hands on the sick. I want you to go and to be a Christian and have fun. 
If you ever wonder, and I, if you guys hear me talk and I say, hey, have you guys had fun? Are you using your faith that would unite you to reach the world or bring the gospel to the nations? If I ask you if you have fun, that's what I mean. I want you to have fun in life. But as we talk about life and everything that's going on right now, I want you to know that you have got to learn the life of the lean. What are you talking about, Pastor Randy? The life of the lean. Well, first off, put an emoji in the text or or in the comment section of what you think I mean when I talk about the life of the lean. Like, how are you leaning? Like, I want to see some of your best emojis come through here. I want to see those emojis just flying through because I personally love emojis and so does Libby. Um, But the life of the lean, all right? So in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, but lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So I want you to know that as you go through life, you've got to make sure that you're not leaning on your own understanding, but you're leaning on the knowledge and the power and the ability of God. So in life, we have to learn to lean, and we always will lean one way or the other. We will either lean person to like who we are, or we'll lean over towards God and what he has for us, or what his knowledge, what his will, what his abilities are. And so um, I want you to know that regardless of what's happening right now with the crisis and everything that's happening and the pandemic of the the COVID-19 and all that stuff, so many people are leaning back to God, right? They're leaning over here towards God because things are rough. They don't know what's happening. There's so much uncertainty. But regardless of all the uncertainty, so many people know that God is still there, God is still faithful. God is still grounded. But when life is good, stock market's high, everything's rolling good, everybody's job is beautiful, you know what? They come over here and they lean on their own understanding a lot of times. But I want to encourage you that as you, even in the high times, if you continue to keep your lean and keep your trust on God, you will have the ability to, whenever the times come rough, you're still going to just skim over the top. Because you know where your hope comes from. You know where your faith is found. You know that you're rooted and grounded in the things of God. And you're not rooted and grounded with your job. You're not rooted and grounded with whatever else is going on in the world. But you're rooted and you're leaning on Christ because you know he will always take care of you. God will always, always, always take care of you. He will always take care of you. And when you lean on God in the good times... You'll continue to lean on God in the bad or the rough times. And I want you to know tonight that life is to be lived fun and life is to always be lived leaned over towards God. Your lean should always be on the knowledge of him. Your lean should always be in the word of God. You know, I want you to know that um, this week I really got challenged. Um, Personally, I was challenged because... How many times is it easy for us just to go through life and realize that, you know what, I don't, um, I, I or, or when you actually go through life and you realize, I don't know if I actually love the word of God the way I used to. You know, do you get up every day and like desire to read the word? You know, I remember a time when I couldn't, I couldn't get enough of the word. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, guys. Like, I, I love God. But there were times that like the word of God, like me reading it and studying it was not like, oh my gosh, I love this. I love this. I love this. You know, but there was a time that I loved everything about the word of God. But for whatever reason, um, I got comfortable. I got lazy uh, when it came to reading and studying the word. But I want you to know that this last week I was challenged and I have been so hungry lately like over this last week for the word of God. You know, I even pulled out this thing. I don't know how many of you guys actually know what this is, but this is a real Bible, you know, uh, a real one. Like it's got highlighter marks and everything in it, you know, like I use it. And so I've gotten so hungry for this. And I want to encourage you uh, this week as you guys are continuing to go through the COVID-19 and that type of thing, your fun as a Christian starts with this. Your fun as a believer starts with the word of God. 
And I want you to have a hunger and a desire to read the word. Because first and foremost, the word of God is the foundation of everything in life. The word of God is our foundation. The word of God is our rock. And so as we go and we live a fun life for Christ, as we live a life that, is, that has faith, you know, and our faith unites us to go reach the nations. I want you to know that that will only happen when you have a good knowledge of the word of God. The Bible is true and is alive. And so I'm just going to open it up and read one of my, one of my highlights. Oh, look, that's the concordance the, or the, yeah, the index, whatever that thing is. Um, but I've got tabs in my Bible because I, I, use, I use it a lot. And I love it, even though I preach from my uh, iPad and it's easier um, to kind of, you know, look things up and go over things in my iPad. I still love my, my word. And so I, I'm just going to read this one. I don't even know what it says off the top of my head, but I'm going to go for it and then we'll improvise, right? Um, so Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it, uh, will complete it until the day of, Lord, of Jesus Christ. I want you guys to know, as it says in Philippians 1 6, that God will complete the work that he started in you. God wants your life to be fun. He wants you to go out and have fun with Him. He wants you to lean in on Him and not lean on your own understanding as it talks about in Proverbs uh, 4. And then also in Philippians, He said, He who began the good work in you will complete it. You are valuable. God created you for a purpose and you can and you will complete that purpose. So 